All right, if you're here, it's because you want to know how to install a PowerShell module using PowerShell. And if that's the case, you've come to the right place. Otherwise, stick around and learn something anyways. So we start by typing out function. We're going to call this function install ps module. Let's close off the brackets. All right, next, let's set up some parameters. We can do that by typing param, open and close parentheses. And then what kind of variables we're going to use. In this case, it's going to be a string of name, module name, and another one that's also going to be a string, and it's going to be called scope. So before we start installing, we probably want to check what modules we already have installed, right? So all we have to do to do that is we can go over to this window where we have PowerShell, and we can type in got module list available, press enter, just wait a few, and we see our list of modules are populated. So on that logic, let's just uh, make sure that we check to see if the module that we want to install is already um, installed. So we'll do a if get module list available, the name and then the name of the module that we're passing through. And if it is present, do something. Otherwise, do something else. So if it exists, we will simply just import the module in question. So we'll just do import module, module name. And if it doesn't exist, well, let's install it. And the scope will be the scope that we passed. And we also want to be able to force it as well as allow clobber. And just an FYI, the reason why I'm doing force and allow clobber is force is because you might have a scenario where you have an older version of that module or a conflicting version of a different module that's already installed. Um, one case I can think of is if you have Azure RM and Azure modules, they will conflict with each other. So a message will show up. Um, in some cases, it might not even install it. So force is one thing to help override that issue, uh, especially if you're trying to use this in an automated process of some sort. And second, even if you force it sometimes, if, like I said, if you have a previous version, it may not install the new version. Um, unless you pass the parameter allow clobber, which is essentially going to overwrite that previous version or the files in general to make sure that it installs on this execution of this command. So after we install it, um, pretty much we just need to make sure that we import the module since that's what we wanted to do anyways. So this is pretty much all we need to have this function be able to receive a module and install it under the given scope. The only thing I would add is putting the logic inside of a try catch block so that we can see the error message when and if it fails. So we can begin by putting lines 8 through 17 inside of a try block. And for presentation purposes, let's grab these lines of code and tab it once so it just looks a little bit neater. Let's also get rid of this extra line up top here. And then we just have the catch, the exception, do something. And let's finish it off with a finally in which we will let the user or at least the output logs know that we've completed running this um, function. So inside the catch block, let's have a write host. You could do write warning if you choose to do so, but I'm just going to write host for now. We're going to say get the current exception and print out that exception message. And finally, whether it's successful or not, we just want to let them know that we've completed um, checking or running installation for the module name.
All right, so finally, all we need to do is actually run it. So we'll do install ps module and module name scope. All right, so the only thing left to do is just give it a spin. So let's type in get module list available. I just want to see what I do have here. Okay, so I want to install one called PS Excel. Scope will say current user. Okay, let's run it. As you can see, it's kind of cut off because I have multiple monitors. I don't know why it doesn't do fit to monitor screen, but either way, you see that it's given us the prompt to actually install it. So in this case, we can hit yes. And sure enough, it's downloading and installing the module. There you have it. So it completed running and it let us know that it's completed. So really the only thing left to do is to make sure that we've actually installed it. And again, all we have to do to do that is get module list available. You give it a second or two to generate the list. And let's see if we can find the module. Sure enough, first line, we've installed PSXL. So there's one last thing I want to cover before we end this video, which is that the get module list available actually shows you the physical location of your modules. So in this case, the directory is shown up here and it shows all of the modules that are present in that directory. Same for this directory. And in this case, PSXL is under my users um, directory, most likely because I chose the current uh, the scope as current user. So that about wraps it up. Um, thanks for watching. If this video was helpful for you, please like and subscribe as well as leave a comment on maybe the next topic I can cover. And obviously sharing the video with other um, friends or, or coworkers would be greatly helpful to the channel as well. So feel free to do so. Otherwise, thanks for watching and stay healthy and take care of yourselves. Yeah.